Hey everybody! Welcome to episode 25 of the Brownie Knits podcast. I'm your host Gina, aka Brownie Knits. I hope all of you are doing well. I want to welcome any new viewers. We've had more subscribers on the YouTube channel, which makes my day and it gets so excited whenever somebody um, subscribes or joins the Ravelry group. We have a lot of new members there. So welcome to you as well. And welcome back to all of you returning viewers. I really appreciate that you continue to watch and expand my world of friends. So, um, all right. We are September 15th, 2015, and I have a lot of announcements, I guess you would say, for this podcast. So we're getting ready to go into fall and um, have some things that have been in the works since about April, actually. So I think you guys will find them exciting. So I'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, give a few project updates, that kind of thing, and then we have our fall recipes and projects giveaway winner to be announced at the end of the episode. So, all right, let's get started then. Um, in terms of like life, there hasn't been a huge amount going on. I had one get together um, with a friend and I'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Um, but then outside of that, it's it, we swung between some like 90 degree days here down to the 60s and up. So I've just been feeling pretty miserable with fall allergies, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, but it's been a little bit nice to be more grounded at home. We had such a busy summer, so September has been a little bit of a respite for us. We haven't had huge plans or many plans at all. Um, and then October, well, actually starting this Saturday, I guess, it starts ramping back up and it's pretty busy through October. And then of course you're right into, you know, the holidays. So, so I've been enjoying our little um, September respite that we've had. Um, and I finished up some socks. Um, these are my mystery socks that I did. Um, the pattern is from a wee bit knitty and it was a mystery sock along that she did last year, so you can get it for free in Ravelry. And I didn't put it on the sock blockers because I wanted you guys to see the motifs. A little lint there. I also did these as part of the Cardiac Red Along um, that Pin Hook and Needles and the Turbo Knitter are doing. Um, I lost my mom and my, well, <laughs> lots of my family members to heart disease. so. And that was an important cause for me to do, so I thought I'd do this. And um, like I said, the pattern is from a wee bit knitty, and the yarn is Cascade Heritage um, fin Fingering Weight. I don't remember what colorway. I think it was just red. <laughs> um, actually, it was probably a number since it was from them. But it was really fun to do. You do it from the cuff down, and you do all these little different charted motifs. And I just thought it was really pretty, especially with like the snowflakes down there on the foot. So, so they're both done and need to go off in the wash. Now I will say that um, that did teach me a lesson though, because all year long I've been, you know, just knitting on socks constantly and really enjoying it and cranking them out. And that one, I just, it felt more like a real project to me because you had to look at the charts for the knits and pearls. And it wasn't hard at all. And they were really well worth doing because um, I really think they're cute. And I can envision wearing them like on Christmas morning or something. Um, but I found that I missed my no think sock knitting. So I'm excited to cast on my next pair of socks, um, which I'm gonna be, making a pair of socks for my hubby because um, I haven't done that yet this year. So he deserves to have some new woolly socks for this winter or two. So, um, so a lesson learned. Not that I won't ever do pattern socks again, but maybe one a year is, is enough. The rest of the year just, you know, enjoying fun sock yarn and letting that do the work for me. Um, I think it's because I like to knit on the socks when we go to movies or when I'm, you know, really zoning out or not feeling well. And it's just, you know, mindless. You can just do it without thinking about anything. 
and so that was my only finished knitted project. Um, I'm still having issues with my finger. I still, I did not do very well on not knitting. So I just justified it by thinking, well, if I knit a little less, then maybe it'll heal. <laughs> maybe take longer, but whatever. Um, so I've been doing quite a bit of sewing, much to my dogs. Um, she just, she hates that sewing machine so much. Oh, she just runs scared from it. Or if I do put her in the room with me where it is, she hides under the bed. But I don't usually put her in the room because I just think it's cruel because she's so afraid of it. But I don't know what to do. She just is afraid of it. She's not afraid of like the vacuum or anything. But she really hates the sewing machine. But anyway, I've been working on sewing um, some different types of project bags. And this week, I'll be putting these up in my Etsy store. Um, so I made these little sock bags. They're little drawstring sock bags. And they'll be 15 US dollars. And they're perfect for like sock size or hat or like a little, um, maybe even a little shawl, um, mittens, that kind of thing. So they each have like a, so for this one, this fabric is the lining too and it's just a little drawstring one and then here's a little foxy one and again this white fabric is the lining fabric for this bag i think it's so cute and he has little um sweaters knit sweaters on see that yeah there you go um, the third one is another little foxy one and again the yellow fabric here is the inside fabric just so cute super super cute they're not even though they are like a fun inside they're not reversible because your drawstring is on um, just one side so well it's on both sides this way but it's only on the outside of the bag um, and then my third one um, is a little Parisian one. So you've got like some of the Parisian scene on this side with the Eiffel Tower. And then the little girl and tree on this side. And its coordinating fabric is this red motif in, this, in the middle. So there's that one. And then this one, oh, I'm going to make myself sell it, but I really want to keep it. Um, is a little wintry one. So you've got your little snowman and then, and it's like a fleecy fabric. And then the cotton fabric is um, in the same colors. And that's also the inside of the bag. I just love this one. So I have a little bit more of this fabric, but not enough of this one. So I might have to go buy a tad more of that to make myself a little project bag and so all of those that I just showed will actually be up in the brownie knits Etsy shop um, this week they'll be $15 US and then um, plus shipping so um, yeah and then the thing that got all me started on you know just sitting down and making tons of the little drawstring bags I made this one for myself out of Doctor Who fabric. So you've got the exploding TARDIS and then the, the boxes, the TARDIS box. And then the inside of this one is exploding TARDIS. So, and I had um, enough of this fabric that I made one like this for me and then for my friend Carol. Hi Carol. I made her one where the exploding TARDIS is the main fabric and then the little police boxes are her central center panel and then the inside. So they turned out really cute and we have them for the upcoming premiere. So that'll be really good. I couldn't keep myself from using it. I was gonna wait until the premiere and then I was like, no, I wanna go ahead and use it. So it is actually holding a new project that I'm working on that is not real exciting just yet because I just cast it on, it's just some ribbing. Um, but I'm using this yarn to make my nephew Jack a hat. His family 
um, just recently moved to Alabama and his dad is a professor there. So he needed some hats in Alabama colors. So, all right. And my other new project. So remember I was gonna try not to knit very much. And um, as soon as I posted that last podcast after I said that, I sat down and started a new sweater. <laughs> so I wasn't very good. I wasn't very disciplined at all. But this is the Macy sweater. And, oh, the color is not showing right at all on screen. I wonder, let's see. Um, hmm. It looks so dark there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There you go. Woohoo! There we go. So this is the Macy sweater and the designer is Hannah and Hannah's last name is very difficult for me to pronounce. So I'm going to put it here at the bottom and in the show notes. Um, I am sensitive to saying names wrong and, um, I'm, and I know I say names wrong all the time. So like I went, my last name used to be Brown, thus Brownie Knits. And then I went to Canals and, you know, I get Canoose, Canoose, like, you know, everything. Um, so I don't want to keep mispronouncing things. And here in Indiana, <laughs> um, we, I grew up in Southern Indiana and there are just places that are named after other places in the world. So it's spelled the same way but we have our own uni unique way of pronouncing things. For example, um, the county I grew up in was right next to D-U-B-O-I-S County. And for the majority of the word, world, that's du Dubois, right? For us, it was Dubois. <laughs> so I just am always like, mm, I don't know if I'm saying people's names correctly. Even Hannah, this Hannah designer, and Hannah, Hannah, um, my swap partner, I'm like, is it Hannah or Hannah? Um, I've known both in my life, so you know, you never know. Um, so anyway, well, I went on a little um, sidetrack there. But I love the thing that drew me to this sweater. Um, go take a look at the pattern in Ravelry. It is a four purchase pattern, but you have these lace motifs that go down the side, all the way down the sides of your arms, and then there is a bottom panel at your waist that's pretty thick of the lace done sideways and you have little pockets and I just thought it was adorable and um, I also was missing a, doing a top down sweater so I wanted I, this is my favorite way to do sweaters and I wanted to get back to that um, this one you know you don't get the immediate like no thinking kind of top down sweater because you do have the lace on the sleeves to worry about but then once you um, divide for your arms then you get to just do some straight stock in it for a while before you do the lace area so I'm really enjoying it this is the yarn it's Malbrigo fingering weight and it is the teal feather colorway so um, now the, the sweater pattern actually calls for more of like a sport weight, um, but I'm using the fingering weight and getting the gauge that I need. Um, and I'm fine with that being like, if that's a little more open, that's fine. Um, because I get hot pretty easily. So I did, I wanted to go with something really lightweight. Plus I just loved the color. <laughs> So now I'm into just some straight stock and knit stitch on that so I can do some mindless knitting there. Um, and then the next thing I had to show you guys, I received my autumn swap package for my swap for all season swap um, where Hannah, Hannah Hanna, <laughs> um, is my swap partner. And I sent Hannah a package that was I love, for me, fall and autumn is all about sun, sunflowers and pumpkins. 
I guess you probably couldn't guess that right. Um, so I made her one of my little sunflower pins and then needle felted her a pumpkin and built the rest of the package kind of around that. So it had a um, skein of yarn in there that was pumpkin spice. And then I put in pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. And um, I put in a smattering of my favorite teas that I like to drink in the fall, um, which are mostly around, I really like cinnamon uh, um, spice teas. So there were quite a few of those. Um, I think there were a few other items in there, but that was the main theme, the pumpkin theme. And Hannah sent me a package where the theme um, were, was, blueberries so she sent like this nice little note and um, so she I wanted to show you guys and tell you what she said about her bag so she makes these little crocheted bags and they're kind of more like a basket bag because um, they really stand up on their own um, but they do have the handle so you can treat them like a bag too and she takes her leftover yarns and does her own little crochet pattern, holding different yarns together. And it creates this really neat, like flecked yarn that you see. So she has quite a few strands held together. And then she takes um, pockets from jeans, from old jeans and puts them on the side. So you have little pockets for your bags. So we've got that one and that one. So that was pretty cool. I was excited to get that from Hannah. And then, like I said, she had a blueberry theme so I haven't broken into these yet but I will today that's gonna to be my snack this afternoon some blueberries and then <laughs> she had several luscious things in here so first of all the yarn that she um, included in my swap is from the uncommon thread which I've always wanted to try and it's this lovely, there we go, it's this lovely blue. The color is Orion, and she sent me two skeins of it. Um, Heavenly Fingering, it's 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, for, and 10% cashmere, and it has 400 meters on it. So it's so beautiful and soft and cozy. And right away I was like, oh, I have a little cowl design in my head that I've been wanting to do and I think that's what this is gonna become so thank you so much Hannah it's lovely um, and then she I mentioned that my favorite teas in the fall were cinnamon um, spice teas well that was until I met Hannah and now I'm absolutely addicted to the tea that she has been setting me and she included a huge um, bag of tea individual tea bags um, in this swap package and they're so delicious still um, a lot of these don't have like they don't have like the flavors on them instead they're named things like sweetheart and stuff like that so I went online oh this one has it on the back the, like this one's a wild strawberry which is so good and there's a fat-free vanilla creamer that you can get and that with the strawberry, it's strawberries and cream. It's so good, so good. And then there's this whole bear series that was included. These are the ones where it doesn't have, I went and looked online cause it just says black tea. Yeah, so um, I think that one's lemon. Oops, I thought the um, bear ones were really fun too because um, they have, you know, Paddington and all his different different ways um, that's another oh good I thought I had less of that that's good another little Paddington and then there is a um, what is this this one uh, yeah blueberry muffin <laughs> I mean these flavors are just amazing so if you haven't tried these, black tea with rhubarb and strawberry, that one's really good. Um, and then I guess I kept a lot of the strawberries in here. I was trying to make myself 
them slow because it was so good. <laughs> um, but anyway, there were tons of them. So I've been drinking a, a cup of tea every night um, and emitting. So easing myself into fall and autumn. All right, so I think that's everything in terms of what I wanted to tell you for projects and such. So now comes the big announcement. So since I think it was, it might have even been March. Um, anyway, early, early, early this year, Christina of A Knitter's Life and I sat down and we were talking about something that we could do together, a project we could take on together. And we had a lot of different things that we discussed. We talked about you know, dyeing yarn or doing whatever. And we settled on doing a design collaboration. And so we have a knitting design collaboration that we are going to run a knit along for. And I designed a hat and Christina designed a cowl. Um, and they coordinate together. They have some of the same elements. Um, they're also different enough that if you just wanted to make one or the other, you could do that. Um, but, and we didn't want to match, total matchy matchy because, you know, sometimes that's overwhelming. So there are some elements that are unique to one pattern or the other. Um, and today, on the 15th of 2015, September 15th of 2015, we're each going to go ahead and put up a record for our patterns in Ravelry so that you guys can take a look at them and see if it's something that you want to join um, and join the Knit Along for in starting in October 1st. Um, and the Knit Along will start October 1st and end November 30th. So, and you can make my hat or you can make Christina's cowl or you can make both. It's totally up to you. Um, regardless of what you're making, you can um, join the Brownie Knits group on Ravelry and the A Knitter's Life group on Ravelry. And then we'll have ways that you can enter both boards for giveaways because we will each have a giveaway package. Um, and I don't want to give too much away in this podcast because um, about the giveaway and some of the prizes and stuff like that because we're going to do a joint podcast that will come out October 1st. Um, and we'll talk all about the projects and the giveaways and things like that. But as of today, September 15th, we will have the patterns up, um, pattern records up in Ravelry for you to look at. They will go for purchase, be available for purchase on October 1st. Um, and we'll also go ahead and have, head and have the threads up on both of our boards for you guys to start planning yarn and things like that. So, all right. Um, I'm gonna make sure I remember to tell you guys this too. Before I reveal the beret and cowl, I also wanted to mention that for anybody who watches this between when it posts on the 15th and this coming Saturday, if anybody is in the um, Ohio area, Christina and I will be attending as like, not as vendors, but just like walking around buying stuff <laughs> at the wool gathering in Yellow Springs, Ohio this weekend on Saturday. And we're, we both can be a little bit shy. Um, Christine's a little bit, be she's better at it than I am um, about introducing ourselves to people or going up to people and saying hi. Um, so I thought, well, you know, maybe if somebody recognizes us and we had our, a button on saying that it was us, then they might be more comfortable coming up to us and talking because I would love to meet anybody that's attending and, and chat with you guys, um, put names and faces together. Um, so I created these little buttons for us that we'll be wearing. So here's mine, my Brownie Knits button. And then here's Christina's A Knitter's Life button. So if you're at the wool gathering on Saturday and you see two girls walking around wearing these buttons, please come up and say hi to us. We'd love to meet you. So. All right, all right, here we go. So here is the hat. So the name of the pattern is the Sabrina Beret because guess what? It's a beret. So it's a cabled beret. Um, it uses two different cables. We've got, actually it uses three different cables. 
we have little ones here that are two different. And then we have a big one here. The little ones travel from the brim all the way up. Um, the bigger ones start, they start as rib here and then increase out and go up. And then everything spirals in and dissolves into pearls in the center here. And it takes one skein of Anzula's For Better or Worsted, which is a 200 yard skein of worsted weight. Um, now, I would highly recommend that you do not use a synthetic yarn for this project because um, due to the cables and everything, when you're knitting this hat, it looks like it could fit a newborn. <laughs> and then when you block it, you actually block it on a, a dinner plate to get the beret to kind of, you know, do this little effect. So I recommend that you use um, a wool blend so that there is a lot of give in the blocking um, and an acrylic would just wouldn't do that for you. Um, and it also blocks out when you're making it, like I said, it looks a little bit like a newborn hat and it looks very pointed because you have a lot of pearls there in the center. But then when you do the blocking on the plate or just stretching it out to 10 inches, circular on your blocking board it flattens that out so that you get this beret shape and it is also a true beret shape like it doesn't we're very used to um, slouchy berets now and it's not really that it is more of like the traditional kind of military inspired beret so the thing that I really like that our friend Carol really pointed out to me first and now that I have shorter hair again, I'm, I'm realizing is that the beret shape really looks great on anybody's um, head, despite what level of, or what length of hair you have. It looks really cute. Okay, I'm back. The mowing guy has moved on, so he's not just below our windows anymore. So anyway, as I was saying, um, I just think it's a really great style of hat for all um, face shapes and hair lengths. It just works really well. Um, what else do I want to say about it? Like I said, I don't want to give everything away because Christina and I will talk more about everything in our podcast together. Um, let's see. You do want to use a yarn too that has some loft to it because um, it helps to just kind of bloom and fill in um, in the pearl section when you block it out. So this is Anzula for Better or Worsted out of the Nimbus colorway, which is a wonderful blue color. And it's just, I don't know, my lighting in here is not showing the wonderfulness of all the colors today. Um, and then I did this one out of another Anzula yarn that's a little bit thinner. Um, and this is their color Red Shoe. And if you have ever used Anzula yarns before, you know that you can get um, any of their colors in any of their yarn um, lines. So I made this one because I'm gonna make, as part of our knit along, I'm going to knit one of Christina's cowls out of this same yarn um, so that when I go to IU games this um, season or watch them, <laughs> I have my little red beret and my, and my cowl to wear. Um, so here is Christina's Sabrina cowl and this is out of, isn't it gorgeous? Look at that. It's just so pretty. So this is out of Anzula for better or worsted, um, two skeins and it's in the O natural colorway. And so the... Cabling here is mirrored on my cables on the hat. And then we've got some reverse stock and knit stitch, which is all the in-betweens here on the hat. Um, and then she kept this cable to be unique to her cow, and I kept the large cable to be unique to mine. And um, let's see, we both have a little bit of rib going on in different parts of our um, designs and for this cow Christina um, you have the deep here portion and then your main body 
it is both projects are worked in the round um, and then up here she has an option you can do it so it's not as deep because I have kind of a short neck so I did not as deep here um, or you can do it so that it's the same depth as your bottom so I think it's so beautiful and I just think it'll be so cute um, together so um, like I said we'll put the project um, pattern pages up in Ravelry today and then they'll go up for sale um, on October 1st but we wanted to give you guys time to sign up think about what yarn you might want to use um, I highly recommend the Anzula for better or worsted it is a little pricier because it does have cashmere in it and everything but um, it would make a great like if you made the hat for somebody for Christmas or the cow for somebody for Christmas, or you wanted to treat yourself. Um, so, and we, I mentioned earlier getting together with a friend. So Christina and I got together and did a little photo shoot for the hat and cow. And I mentioned earlier that it has been in the 90s. Well, that day it was in the 90s. And we went out in our wool berets and our wool cows and our wool coats and my husband was so nice to go with us and take pictures of us. So I'll include some of those pictures from the photo shoot at the end of this video. Um, and I'll put some outtakes in there too. <laughs> but um, we also, I made these little buttons to um, kind of show off the Sabrina set um, this weekend too, that we'll have on with our other buttons. But I just love how this picture turned out. And yeah, I just think it's so cute. And we were missing our friend Carol. If Carol had been there, she would have been modeling with us too. So, so I'm very excited. Like I said, we'll both have um, giveaways on our boards that'll be different. So she'll have a prize package and I'll have a prize package. Um, and then we will, in podcasts between October 1st and the end of November, we will you know, give little tips and tricks on things to do when you're knitting the projects. And um, we also have, you know, an, an open chatter boards on our Ravelry boards where you guys can talk to each other or ask us questions and that kind of thing. So what else do I want to say about it? Do I have anything else on my list to say about it? I think that's everything about it. I'm very excited. It was so much fun to do. Um, it really kind of got both of us out of our design avenues and made us kind of think differently and we enjoyed it so much that we are thinking up other things that we can do together so hope you guys enjoy it um and then we have our winner for our fall recipes and giveaway or fall recipes and projects giveaway and just so you remember this person is going to win a stash bot book these little um, knit four cards and charms, stitch markers, by Prairie Bag Works, Knitting is Naughty <laughs> sticker. This canopy, um, the fiber company canopy yarn, and a skein of Malintosh Pashmina. And our winner is Linda of Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. And Linda's Ravelry name is L-M-E-C-O-L-L. -L. So congratulations, Linda. Get in touch with me to give me your address and I'll get that mailed off to you so that you can create something for um, the fall or winter or, you know, whatever you want to do. All right. So I think that's everything. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are excited. I'm excited. Okay. All right. Well, I'm off to... I don't know. I don't know what I'm off to do. Knit. All right. I hope everybody has a great couple of weeks until I talk to you again. And happy knitting and crocheting. Bye-bye.